on. Hello, hello. I am so excited today. Uh, my name is Linda Vickers and you have joined the Inspired by Her Story interview with Shannon Schultz. And uh, we will be inspired by her story. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon is very creative. Uh, uh, we met when I lived in Winnipeg. And um, yeah, Shannon is very, very creative. So I want to ask you, Shannon, when did you know that you were a creative person? Um, probably from very, very early on. I was fortunate to be raised in a home with uh, my, my father's Irish. And, you know, they've got the, the Kiss the Blarney Stone. They like their storytellers. And he very much supported imagination. And on my mom's side, they're Mennonite. So they were also uh, music and, and things like that was very much encouraged in my home. And, uh, you know, with having the Irish and the, the uh, Mennonite, then I'm a fighting pacifist. So you have to find different ways to win the battle, right? So I went to a United Church when I was younger and then I switched over to the Mennonite Church and because my friends were going there and when people would ask my parents you know how can you have two different have her going to a different church than you're attending because they went to the United Church my dad just said God's in both places it didn't matter where I went Very good. so I was really fortunate to to have that but yeah Sunday mornings was um or Saturday we would draw the the cartoons I would copy that kind of stuff and I was always doodling and, and drawing and, and doing that kind of stuff. So it started there and, and um, yeah, I was, I was always encouraged and people appreciated what I could do. So that was a real advantage for pursuing creativity. I mean, I remember being in the United Church um, and I'd be bored, right? So I want to draw something in church and like sometimes it was my mom had a Kleenex and a pen and I was <laughs> sketching yeah. stuff on there in my own stories because uh, you know I was disengaged from what was going on in the front but in the back of the church they had a, a picture of the laughing Christ okay, yeah. and that impacted me a lot because everything else I had seen you know he was aside from him sitting with the children most of the time he really looked horrible <laughs> <laughs> right but this laughing Jesus I, I could relate to that and I thought oh he he knows how to laugh he knows how to have a good time and so those are things that really influenced me moving forward okay. so so do you um is your is your medium mostly painting sketching um, um I think I started off more like dynamic doodles with uh, you know pencil and that kind of stuff I, I liked, I started off doing small watercolors. I like felt marker. Um, in the last 10 years, I've been doing a lot more uh, acrylics and recently water soluble oils. So yeah, the mediums are, are changing and yeah, pushed out of comfort zone, all that kind of good stuff. It's all kinds of fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, and some, sometimes when we, when we don't know the rules, then we just, break yeah. them as we were learning and that's when you get your own unique yeah, uh, yeah. creation yeah well especially when you don't know the rules and it was funny because when I was um in junior high I just thought I was going to go to the high school that was closest to me and I was going to take some kind of secretarial course which I would have been horrible at because I am not administrative it's not a natural gift for me and my friends um took my application and said, no, you're going to, uh, there was a new vocational school. And they said, that's where you're going. And they filled out the application and I got to spend three years doing art for half a day every day. And then my final block there was in animation. Um, oh, okay. but I, yeah, but it was kind of self-taught because the teacher didn't know much about it. So he got me a book from the library and that's how <laughs> we figured that out and he had a friend that he'd gone to school with who owned an animation studio called Ken Perkins Animation Studio in Winnipeg and so I got an interview with him and he took me on to work in the uh, ink and paint department so my first job at a high school was working uh, with cell animation like old school like Disney stuff yeah oh, oh so that's like the flip books kind of um, well it was on it was on uh, acetate sheets and so 
they would print them off and then I was in charge of making sure that everybody, and there was a small crew under, and to me to make sure that they painted in within the lines and you didn't have, they called it boiling, like the paint didn't, you didn't have a blob, stuff like that. You had to be consistent. You don't actually stroke the paint on. For most of it, you kind of puddle it on. And it, it's, they don't do that often anymore. <laughs> Everything's digital now, but yeah, it was a, a good place to start. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. You were telling me that, uh, you were telling me earlier how you had been commissioned to paint a mural on an elementary school wall. Yes, I don't know if commissioned is exactly the right word because I didn't get paid, but. <laughs> you got but my you kids recruited to volunteer. <laughs> yes, yeah, my, my kids went to this school and there was this great big expanse in the very front of, of blank um, st uh, stipples. So I thought, well, that needs something. So I painted, um, there was two murals heading into the front of the building. So on one wall, it was all the kids in the playground with different staff members. Uh, and I covered all the seasons and the other side. So it was like they were going to meet their education. There were, um, I did uh, pictures of uh, scientists and, and role models and historical figures and dinosaurs and that kind of stuff. So the kids were, both characters were going into the, into the building. So. That was a lot of fun. And they even let me paint things inside the building after on the on the glass. Um, yeah, so in the principal's office, he had a, a window that looked out into one of the classrooms and we painted a, a forest ranger with binoculars. So I left the, the binoculars clear so he could actually see into the classroom, but all the kids saw was this forest ranger. So yeah, it was all kinds of fun. Yeah, yeah. So now you, um, you had said about how the grade ones wanted to paint with you. Yes, one of the things that I found really intriguing when I was working on the mural, the kindergarten and grade one students would come out and they'd go, oh, that's really good. Would you like help? And thank you very much. But no, I think I'll do this by myself. Um, but grade two to grade five, they would come out and say, that's really nice. I wish I could do that. And it got me thinking like what, what happens between like from grade one where they were very confident and willing to lend a hand and grade two that they had no confidence left. And you know, then I started talking to friends and stuff like that and realized that I had a lot of friends that wouldn't acknowledge that they had any kind of creativity. And so, you know, you, you get chatting and stuff like that and and for most of them around grade two, a teacher or a peer looked at what they were creating and told them like, if they were drawing a cat, they said, well, that looks like an elephant, you can't draw. And as soon as they agreed with that perception, that evaluation, that lie, because it's a lie, you are creative, that lie became their truth. And it, all of a sudden that lie has all kinds of power and it, it takes you, it, they fed it, right? I can't draw and they laugh, I can't draw a stick man, I can't draw a straight line. So I started doing um, creativity workshops. And one of the first things we did was, okay, this is how you draw a stick man. And here's your ruler for your straight line. Now stop saying that you can't do those two things because you can. Yeah. The second thing is when you're in school, one of the first things they teach you is how to print your name and you, you, how to you do the alphabet. And you're copying someone else's art. It's on those lines that everybody had on the top of the roll, whatever. And you're copying someone else's art. And you do that for a while, but it doesn't take long before your own essence, your own creativity comes through those letters and you manipulate them and shape them to make them your own and they're unique. And so that's, that's one of the other things we did. Like when you sign a check with your name on it to me, it is a work of art and the bank knows that it's unique <laughs> and, and they like your art. You know, it's not someone else's signature. So we really like that. And so one of the, the second exercise we do in the class is they have a folded piece of paper and you print your name with your dominant hand. And then on the other side, you print it with your non-dominant hand. So the creativity is in there, but it hasn't been exercised as much. So, because for most people, doing it the second time it doesn't look as polished they feel awkward and clumsy it's uncomfortable and so that's what we try to maintain moving forward that 
you're using muscles that haven't been used before, but that creativity is in there. And the more you use it, the better you're going to get at it. Yeah. And it, and it is how much like you had said about um, the negative or positive feedback. I know with yeah. my kids are, are really creative uh, and we had um, a lot of art that they would bring home from school or do at home. Mm. And so yeah. the, the stairway, we called it the art gallery. So my son had yeah. one side, my daughter had one side. It was like, you guys hang what you want on your art. You know, this is the art gallery. Everyone saw it. And mm -hmm. they would they would pick a favorite and we would frame it. That was their their picture for the yeah. month. And just just to encourage that. Yeah. You know, um I, I know my my daughter too, she had a the the, the closet door was a folding bifold. Mm -hmm. So I had painted a picket fence on the bottom, and then we used um, plastic bags and made um, the clouds, and we used our fingers and we fingerprinted. Yeah. We, we did finger uh, finger painting like the grass, mm -hmm. yeah. and I I just let her like paint whatever like paint the fairies yeah. paint paint the uh, the bugs and the worms and whatever just it's it's just a door you know <laughs> yeah let her have fun yeah. with it you know so but it's it's it, we just always encourage that so mm. it makes I think it makes a difference it does it does and I think there's a, a more like this generation has more confidence in their creativity. They're allowed to explore it and express it probably more so than we were. I think our generation growing up, things were supposed to look a certain way. And the definition of artist was absolutely different. Like if, if you were going to call yourself an artist, then you knew that most people were interpreting that as, you know, you thought you could do like Rembrandt or something, you know, <laughs> it wasn't like yeah. Charles Schultz wasn't considered the artist. No, no, it would be a painting on the wall and mm -hmm. they were all originals. We never had, yeah. you know, the the, the print um, yeah. copies that you buy in the stores yeah. now. So everything was original. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. right. So now you have different groups that you're you're running? Um, well, in the church, we have a create, we call it the creative crew. So in our church on Sunday mornings during the worship, we have four easels up at the front and people can come up and paint. We just finished a really amazing, every year we try to do at least one corporate painting so everybody can participate. And we just finished one that I absolutely love. Um, and it kind of followed with along with Advent. So the first week we painted these neon colors in, in orange and red and, and it, it almost vibrated up and it's huge. And then the second week people came with, we had neon markers so they could write a blessing or prayer or declaration or things like that it's just positive stuff and then this past week we taped it all off and we put a cityscape of the city of Winnipeg that's where we live um, with the river and painted black all over the the color and then ripped off the tape after so the city and the river are glowing with and it was such a it was so much fun having everybody participate um, and, and there's just layers of what God's doing in the city and, and what he did in and through us and, and everybody connecting creatively, you know, without a fear of you, you can't mess it up if you're just painting over like a black mark. You can't screw that up. And we've done other ones. We had some um, <laughs> for communion with uh, water balloons, but we filled them with paint and then dropped them off the, the side of the building onto these canvases and they look really sharp so oh, you know yeah so that that's um but we have other people that they they work creatively and prophetically through paint and stuff like that so I'm part of that group and then uh, just before the pandemic I started another group with artists from around the city um, prophetic artists so uh, there's a someone who does clay work uh, someone who's a, a teacher at the King's School. I wanted to get together and find out what God was saying in, around, and through them, through the art. What's the message? What do we feel? It. What's the prophetic word that God's giving? What's the encouragement? What's the direction? All those kinds of things. Because the artists and the creators are front line when you're in, in battle. He sent to the musicians and the artisans and, and the singers and the dancers. They were front line. And it was amazing 
when we first got together, how tired everybody was, how um, they had almost discouraged, like they weren't picking up a brush. And when we got together, there was life, right? And so the first year we, we, we were all set to do a show with the work that we had done. And the week before all the restrictions came in and we were shut down and we couldn't do it. Um, but the artwork that was coming forward at that point was very much about warfare. Like some, uh, Cliff had sculpted uh, a COVID angel, you know, victory in the battle and that kind of stuff. That was the kind of work that was coming out and, and on intercessory prayer and, you know, really in church kind of, you know, we, we've got a storm and, and set up our boundaries and stuff. And then we tried to do a second show. We did a small one. Um, everybody's in the next year, everybody's painting changed. People who had been doing clay work suddenly switched their medium. Everybody was getting moved out of the comfort zone into something else. So that was way cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, some really amazing artwork came out of that and changes. So, but we felt like God was calling us out of the church and into the garden to come walk in intimacy with him. Yeah. Right. And the, the one show that we did get to put on was actually in a garden uh, and it poured the day before it poured that morning but when it was time for us to set up our stuff the sun came out and you know it was so it, it was just fantastic and it was interesting to look around and we had um, a photographer as well and so the the two men in the group have a focus on flowers which I think is really interesting because most men don't stop to smell the roses you know like right. So they're, they're doing all these pictures or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there was a lot of that kind of stuff. And I know the one piece that I was working on had two trees. So it was a window. So one is a stained glass window with a, a tree in it. And then the other side is open. And I really felt like God was calling us, you know, outside of the building. That's a good place to, to start. And the stained glass windows initially were meant to help illiterate people understand Bible stories. They would have pictures of them so you could explain that to them. Okay. And so then, but now you can come out in, into the garden and with no shame because God knows where you are and he'll keep you safe in, in that. And now this last quarter, it's been lots of nature uh, paintings, um, whales and polar bears and like just a real shift in, in God wanting to communicate with us in our surroundings and in a more natural place. There's just layers and layers of it. It's really exciting. That's yeah. That's, that's mm -hmm. so yeah, so sorry, that group was called Mud in Your Eye Creatives. Okay. <laughs> and we can, the name came out of prayer because a whole bunch of reasons, but part of it was because the cheer, here's Mud in Your Eye, can, is done in bars. So it's not necessarily a, a religious name. However, Jesus did heal the blind man by putting mud in his eyes by using his own spittle, which would have redeemed spit because as a beggar, because you can't see and that's your only source of income, he would have been spat upon and all those kinds of things. And God redeemed it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I'm you need help to get to from, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we, we've, it's been really interesting watching how God has done that to us, like where we thought we had a vision, we thought we knew where we were going and, you know, redirecting us very gently and our vision is improving. I'm really excited to see what happens next year. Wow. Yeah. And you said you had another one called Happy Oh yeah, the third group um, was spearheaded by Natasha Boone and she's an amazing artist, but it's female illustrators. And I'm, I've been on the planet the longest and our youngest member is about putting that. 10. Yeah. Well, they don't want me to say that I'm old. <laughs> and I can't really honestly, yeah, I can't honestly say I'm the most mature. So yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, the youngest uh, member, is she's 10 and she does digital art and she's just fabulous. And her confidence and, and the questions that she asks and stuff is just, yeah, so much freedom and gives you so much hope for what, what's coming up. So I'm really excited about the next generation because, yeah. Well, it, 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 like you said, 
when we went to school, art was just drawing on paper. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much yeah. it. Um, we didn't even consider like a, a sewing class to be art. And yet there's some beautiful artwork comes out of sewing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so now there's there's so many more options. Um, you look on, on TV now, and they've got art shows like creativity in in chocolate and any kind oh, of yeah. food. Yeah, like, you saw that one. Oh my gosh, <laughs> they're all over the place. So I yeah. think that there's been a release and a healing of the creative creativity period, and we get to co-create with God. And I'm sure He's going finally. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, this is this is so good, and and you just know people when you're struggling with everything that's going on around us right now you can take that time to be creative and it's not discouraged as much as it used to be before that was something it was fluff you know well, you, you had you had other things to do you needed to make a living you needed to do don't make time for your art that's right, right? our art was considered a, a hobby or something well, that yeah. people didn't have anything to do it didn't really have any uh it was interesting because on one hand, it was like it had no value, but if you took away all the art, there'd be no books, there'd be no videos, there'd be no machines, there'd be, there'd be nothing because right. you need that create, you need the imagination the to- inventors and, yeah. 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 And, and you're probably the, the, the same as this. I, I find if I, don't, if I don't make something or create something, then it gets kind of built up until like I have to do something. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm like I have to do something. Yeah. Um, I don't care if it's rearranging my furniture. I have to change the pictures on the wall. I have to do something. So I'm <laughs> sure there's a lot of people like that that just, you know, um <laughs> where they have art therapy, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know during the, the first lockdown, I was so frustrated because you couldn't go buy anything. You couldn't even get proper supplies to do art. That's true, yeah. So I made um, COVID pinatas. And um, right. yeah, so, but you couldn't buy a balloon because that was considered non-essential. So I had to, to configure my, I did it over these bowls and then put that together because I had friends with newspapers and there'd be flyers. You could still get that kind of stuff, but and lots of flour and glue and then toilet paper rolls for the spikes oh, and then good. painted that and then i donated it to like the the hospital and and stuff like that so people could get rid of their frustration and we took one out to the park i filled them with bird seed and <laughs> then a little bag with uh, hugs and kisses and lifesavers because those were the things we were missing and i couldn't i mean it was therapeutic for me to make them but it was, felt even better to hit that sucker, you know, and, and break it open. <laughs> yeah, so I've got two left. I don't want to make them anymore because it was a really slow assembly line. Um, but the longer they sit, the harder they get. So the first ones broke fairly easy, but these ones, nah, you kind of have to really mean it. And I gave some to friends, like one lady, uh, one of the paramedics, my daughter's friend, drove over hers with the car. <laughs> <laughs> Another one had a steel rod. That thing didn't stand a chance. Like it was just it was a lot of fun. And then one person didn't read the instructions and broke it in their house. Oh. Lots of bird seed in their rec room. Oh, wow. But that's okay. That's what you should read. <laughs> instructions included for a reason. Yeah. 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 So now I have been intrigued with your little sketches that you do um, on online. The 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 paint blot. Oh, the, the watercolor. Okay. I think these are so cute, and I I want you to show everybody. So this is the book. I'm gonna get a better light. Okay. Yeah. Hang on a second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I hope everyone's enjoying this. It's she's just very creative and lots of ideas. So you're gonna you're gonna be. Um, you're going to be amazed at what she's going to show you next. The uh, Okay. Now, I first saw these. That should be a little better. Okay. Yes, that is. It's good. Not, not so much shadow. So when, we, when you first post these little blobs or yeah. whatever you yeah. call them, um, sure. they're, they're, just, they're just different colored water blobs. Yeah. It's like a happy Rorschach test. 
So, and, and it was just good creative practice for me. So I'll find you if I want. Okay. So I do one like this. Can you see it okay? Can you hold it up a little bit? Better? Yeah, okay. So that's, okay. What, that's what you would post online. And yeah. What do you see? Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I, I would turn it around so people had options on, on what do they think it is. Yeah. And then they would write what they thought it was. And then I would let them know that they were mistaken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's wrong. <laughs> and so then it was more like this. And I'm sure it's all backwards. So I'll read it to you. Um, no, I can read it. No, put oh, it back yeah. up again. Yeah. Someone stole his heart and broke it, but he decided to keep his space open and soon it was filled with even more light or more love and light. In fact, he practically glowed. Yeah. Isn't that so creative? The wow. best one. Okay, here's another one. And it makes for a fun party game. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. What do you see, Linda? Uh, kind of, um, I'm seeing the back of an angel with his feet crossed, sitting on a cloud. Oh, that's very nice. Okay. What do you, what did you see? Oh, Maria thought the fluffy collar was the cat's meow. Molson found it to be less than perfect. Feline fashionistas are finicky. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And then... I like this one a lot. That's it. Okay. I love how the col the colors are blending. Yeah. yeah. What do you think it is? A dancing bear. You're, yep. Good job. Oh, it is. Okay. He was a hug looking for a place to happen. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Yeah. So th this is this is such a, a unique expression of creativity. Mm. Um, now, Shannon, you've got a couple of books that you've written and illustrated. And mm -hmm. published. Yeah, these are my own books. I, I've, I've done illustration work for other people. But um, when I was still working at the high school, they had a, a daycare for the teen moms. And they needed a book about inclusion, people with disabilities and stuff. And it couldn't be like bunnies and chickens. The characters had to be people. Okay. And so the woman who ran the daycare asked if I would do something like that because I had, I had done stuff for her before. And uh, so I did it in just a little photo album thing because so the kids could chew on it and, you know. Um, and then she said, you know, the daycares really need something like this. You should publish it. So I explored that and, and self-published the book and it did quite well. And now I'm at a crossroads because I've only got a few, maybe 80 copies left. 70 copies left I just dropped some off um but okay so it was called Faith Has Freckles and Walter Has Wheels but did you know and so it starts off with um I'll just give you a little bit of it can you see it okay so my name is Faith I have red hair and freckles but did you know Peanut butter makes me puke. I'm allergic to it. My friend Walter loves peanut butter, but he doesn't eat it when I go to his place. And then mm -hmm. Walter has wheels, but did you know? He is strong. He can beat my brother Todd in arm wrestling. And so it goes through all these different characters. So they've got, this is something that you can see about them right away, but did you know that they have all these other things going on? Um, That's good. The yeah. qualities that we don't necessarily see and to right. point out for kids. Yeah, so there, there's there's uh, kids with diabetes in this, it, it, autism, um, Down syndrome. Uh, one of the boys is missing an, an arm. You know, it, it, it's everybody's got yeah. something on the blind, but he's a magician. And then one of the girls is deaf, Tanya. And so at the back of the book, it's got um, a page where the kids can say, you know, my name is, I have this, but did you know? So that um, they can use it in classrooms and stuff like that. So that's been really, really interesting too, because there's a couple of schools um, in the city and in other provinces and stuff that have used the book for like a week long activity. And I know one of the schools, they invited me in to come read to them during the February I Love to Read month. 
And the staff had participated and done a, my name is Mrs. But did you know? And they said, we've been working together for 10 years, some of us, 15 years, and we found out things we didn't know about one another. Yeah. You know, so it was really, really good for building relationship. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. And so then at this book, <laughs> this is What Do You See When You Walk With Me? So the main character is Tanya. She's the deaf girl from the first book. So every time she speaks, there's her speech bubble is all ASL. Okay. Now, originally, I wrote the storyline for this book 36 years ago. Took a long time to, when someone says, how long did it take you to do the book? 36 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was when we had the whole stranger danger because Candace Dirksen had gone missing and there was another little boy in the States who had gone missing and my kids needed to be finger paint uh, fingerprinted in the malls and everything was stranger danger never talk to strangers which I, I understand mm -hmm. but I, I had other friends with small kids and we were walking with the kids one day and this little grandma came and said hello and her children hid behind her because this was a stranger and uh, this isn't a way to raise kids like when the old lady down the street says hello and, and you're with your mom you should be able to say hello back yeah. So I, I wrote a poem and then did a book for the kids. So the poem is, when I go walking down the street, I take a good look at the people I meet. I like to look at the color of their eyes and I pay attention to their size. I like to know if they're big or small. Problem is to me, they all look tall. I check their hair. Is it short or long? Are they doing things right? Are they doing things wrong? Do they have a big nose? Are their faces mean? Are they wearing glasses? Is their eyesight keen? If they turn my way and they say hi, I say it right back and I wave goodbye and I keep on walking down the street and I take a good look at the people I meet. So that was all kinds of fun and I was ready to get it published <laughs> before computers and you know, it was a whole process. It didn't go anywhere. And I kept wanting to revisit it and revisit it. And then I guess about five, six years ago, I sat down, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do it because after I had done the faith has freckles. I asked the kids in the high school, if you were going to have, if I was to do another book on one character, which one would it be? And they all, the majority picked Tanya because she talked with her hands. Maybe that was the appeal. I don't know. So I thought it would be really interesting, especially because everybody's on their cell phones. They're not paying attention to what's yeah. going on. So I wanted to incorporate yeah. that into it. Yeah. So that was the start of it. And then the other part of it was what story are your kids picking up? right so how are you going to get to dialogue with all that so i have um like on, on this one this is a, i like to look at the color of their eyes and the little girl has a black eye now she's got a baseball glove and a baseball bat so if you're coloring with your grandkids or whatever you could infer that she's got her playing bait she got hurt playing baseball but if a child is coming from an abusive background it can give them a safe opportunity to say, well, maybe someone hurt her. And you yeah. could have a different conversation, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, that book is more an opportunity to be as a conversation starter. It's very much a conversation starter. And then each page number is in a different language because everybody counts. Um, I've got ASL, French, German, Ojibwe, uh, Tagalog. In, in conversations in the background of the book. Every second page is black and white so the kids can color it. Um, I, over the winter I did COVID pages, like just a two to insert with people wearing masks so you can do like a spot the difference kind of thing with the book. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, so you know, what looks different from the, these pages to now there's, there's fewer characters. Some people are wearing masks, some people aren't. And you can have that kind of conversation with the kids um, and, and it's not really a hot spot, right? You can find out what they're thinking and what they're perceiving. Um, I think it's a really good book for just creating awareness of your environment. And I know one of the schools where I went in to read the book, they had had an incident where it was winter time and there was two little girls, one of them I think had fallen and a man got out of his truck to help. And they reported him and there was an investigation. And, you know, the kids were all, oh, you know, a stranger danger. And he was just there to help. Like it wasn't, 
they had misread what was going on. And so it, I, I think it just gives opportunity to talk about that kind of stuff. It, one of the pages has, um, there's, well, I'll show you. Well, that's so, true. Like, I mean, the, the kids are the kids are growing up being afraid of people. They and, really and, are. Yeah, and I we assume we know what they're thinking, and we don't, right? What What do you see? So, like in in this one, I think on the right side. Yeah. Okay. So you can see there's um, can you see there's two guys painting on uh, the side of a building? Is that showing up? Or do I have the wrong side? Uh, no, I think that's right. Just move it. Okay, yeah. there. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So, and there's a police officer coming and the store owner is coming up. So when I show that page to the kids and they go, oh, well, you know, you're not supposed to do that on buildings and yeah, and the police are coming. And, and then this is, yeah. then when you turn the page, it's printed upside down on purpose because it says, are they doing things right? Are they doing things wrong? But what was really going on with the guy's spray painting is they had been hired to do it, do a mural. So the owner's coming out to pay them, and the police officer is actually the father of one of the kids. Okay. Right? So you can have that, that conversation that you they could be right, that you're not supposed to paint on building, but maybe you're not. There could be another side to this story. Just to start developing a little more uh, critical thinking and and during the, the process of, of putting the book together, there are so many things that at the time, I thought, what the heck is this? I was looking for something in Ojibwe. And one of the phrases I found, you know, like when you're looking up for French and you're going to take a trip and where's the bathroom and, you know, how much does this cost, blah, blah, blah. What came up on, on the site that I was looking at was I found the baby's shoe. And I thought, well, that's a weird, on the baby's shoe. So I did a little thing with it. You know, I found the baby's shoe. And now we're finding the baby's shoes, the residential schools, you can talk about that, right? Wow, yeah, wow. So there were things that I would, that God works through you that you're not aware of at the time. Yeah. And so there's layers and layers and layers of stuff. Um, adults, it, it, it's a funny book, it's a hard book to sell because people look at it so busy. And unless you understand a little bit of how it can function, you know, People pick it up. This is too much for me, and they they put it down once they have yeah, it. Yeah, it's an activity book. It's, it's a, an activity book. Activity yeah. discussion book. It's not just a sit down before you go to bed book. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's um it's interesting. People that bought the first book bought the second book, you know, because well, okay. But the 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 first book is definitely written for you know like a kindergarten to grade two reading level. The second book is still probably a grade two, three reading level, but the activity and the thought process and the ways that you can use it is a lot higher. Yeah. Um, and so now the kids that, that really like the first book, they're older now. So they're, you know, five, six, seven, and now they like the other book because now they're finding hidden pictures and, and they're telling their own stories and they're seeing a lot more. And yeah, they can spend that time. They can do their own reading. Yeah. Where are those books available, Sean? Um, right now, they're both available at the Canadian Museum of Human Rights and Toad Hall Toys in Winnipeg. Um, and yeah, hopefully next year, I will have some kind of website or something to make them more available. That's my downfall. And I think with a lot of creatives, I just want to create. I don't want to do this business part. I don't want the technical yeah. part. <laughs> no, I hear you. I really hear you on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I really dropped the ball on on uh, some of that stuff, but you know, we'll get well, there. I will. I will be putting the link um, because people could contact the um, yes, you know, the museum or Toad Hall store, retail store, yeah. both yeah. in Winnipeg. Uh, they mm -hmm. could contact them and get them to ship it to them. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I like with doing it, because there's another group in um, Larkin O'Leary, Larkin O'Leary, which is a fabulous name. It's her real name. Um, <laughs> someone gifted her the book. She lives in California and she has a son who's medically fragile with Down syndrome. And she started a, a, a group called Just Two Moms that has now evolved into Common Ground 
society. And so they use Faith Has Freckles as part of their inclusion program going into schools um, throughout the states or throughout their state. And she's been meeting with senators and stuff. They're expanding. It's a fabulous program. So I had sent her a bunch of books because she would do the presentation. People wanted to buy them, but she didn't. She's like us, right? She's just very creative. I don't want to have to do the business part. Um, and so when people were contacting me to send like a, a, a school set or whatever, there was so much paperwork for, that I didn't understand involved with taxes and stuff like that. I was like, oh, forget it. But the museum already has that laid out. Exactly. So people so they can sell the museum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll print them or we'll, uh, I yeah. will post the link to that. Yeah. And did, do you have any final thoughts to encourage people who are watching today? I think everybody watching, you, you need to know and say out loud that you are creative, right? And that, thank goodness that you can't draw like that person because they probably can't draw like you. That's right. And we need all those different voices and expressions and perspectives. And it's so funny, like the, the way God designed everything when we hear music to me what's coming up in the next year is to embrace the invisible all those people who felt like they were on the fringe before that they were overlooked that nobody saw them that's a good season to be in because if they can't see you they can't stop you oh, right that's good yeah you have you have tons of power once you become visible you become much more of a target so embrace your invisibility but when music is played, it you can't see music. You know, it, it bounces up all these molecules that you can't see. It goes into your ear and everybody's ear is uniquely shaped by God. So we're not even hearing the same song. We're not hearing the same melody. And the same thing with, with colors. I mean, it doesn't really exist. It's light waves. Everybody's eyes are different. So we come together and we agree that this is red, but we're probably not seeing the same shade of red or blue but we found a place of, of commonality. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're not seeing things exactly the way someone else is, that's wonderful. And have that conversation. And I found that for the most part, art can be a neutral zone. If you're having an issue with somebody about something, that's a good place to, with, with a piece of art, it can have, you can have safe conversation because you're not attacking one another. You're learning one another's perspectives and what are you actually seeing? You know, one of the paintings I did last year was um, Potential Communion. And so it, it was, a, there was a divide of water between these two people that were sitting. One side was all green and flesh and he had bread. And the other side, it was all burnt and, and looked like there had been a bomb gone off or something. And he had the wine. And it was, we have the, asking people, what did they see? And having husbands and wives not see the same thing. And have them look at each other, well, how do you, I didn't see that. I didn't notice that. Just the conversation that started out of that, and that that's the potential that we have for communion with one another. Communion happened before the crucifixion. So it wasn't for, you know, all, all the believers and stuff like that. It was, nobody knew what was coming down the pipe. They were just having, and so it was very inclusive and open and, and sharing the cup and, and the bread. It's a reminder that people don't have to go through a bunch of prerequisites in order to have fellowship with one another and with God. And when you're having fellowship with one another, you're having fellowship with God. Yeah, and I've, and I've always said that he, you know, he, he didn't make us, he didn't create us to be alone. He created mm -hmm. us for community. We're created Absolutely. for community. We're, we, we're created differently and, unique, yes. and uniquely. And yeah. we're created in his image. And if there's anybody that's creative, it's him. I mean, look, there's nobody the same. Yeah. So, right. you know, yeah. that, so that gives us a lot of, um, a, a lot of ability to just explore, just let it come out. And yeah. A lot of room for growing because, you know, there's some image barriers of his that I think, oh man, <laughs> 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 you couldn't possibly really look like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all trying. We're all yeah. trying. <laughs> well, I I am so happy to be spending this yeah. time with you today, Sh uh, Shannon. This is good. And Thank you, Linda. 
thanks so much for, for joining me. And I'm sure that um, yeah, we're all inspired by your story. because it, oh, Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for doing this. This is great. It's, thanks it's, for releasing your creativity. Yes, and we need to. We need mm. to. And yeah. I will post um, all the links um, okay. with, with the interview. Thanks again. Thanks. And look forward to hearing and seeing more. Yeah, me 